In this video, we will learn the shear plate connection design, which is the first video for the lecture. The connection configuration is shown. The shear plate is welded to column or primary beam or girder, but it may be bolted or welded to the connecting beam. This type of connection is only welded if intention is to release movement from the supports. That is no transfer of flexure from beam to supporting member. The scenario in the video involves design of special moment resisting frame parallel to girder connection as a shear connection. The e model for the design is already provided. We have to design the shear connection for the purlin girder. The type of connection in RAM connection is referred as BG i.e. beam girder connection. Let's proceed to the e model first. The model is already provided here. The purlins are W15, W10 by 15 and the girder is 18 by 35. The column is 14 by 74. Let's turn off the unusual or require, unrequired things so that we can get a clearer picture. Let's go to story one plan. Section properties. Now the cyan colored members are girders and the blue colored members are purlins or secondary beams. The selected joint shows that we have to design this connection. So in order to design this connection, we must know the forces at the joints between the connection of the purlin and the girder. Let's add a new joint as we know that the code was BG. The beam size is as already told W10 by 15. So here you can see a list of different libraries from different countries. Currently we are in United States library W10 by 15. That is a wide flange section Berlin. The material used is grade 50. The length of the member is an important thing since we are primarily connecting the Berlin. So the length of Berlin's is 15 feet. If there was variation in the length between the Berlin's, then we have to define both of the connection separately. The girder size as already told was 18 by 35. That is also a wide flange section here. And the material is same. The material for Perlin is also A992. That is 50 KSI yield strength material. In different countries it may be known as different but the grade 50 is universal. So first we need to add the load cases which we are going to design the connection for. The load cases is the list of loads which will be utilized in the load combinations. So for this we are using seismic cases and the gravitational cases. Wind is not taking in this video although you can design for wind as well. You can also add your custom combinations from here but I will be generating the code specific design combinations. We are using ASCE 710 LRFD method that is load resistance factor design the combinations are shown here that will be generated since we have narrowed down the load cases so these combinations are generated now the next step will be to define con the design con configuration of the connection and add the loads the loads from the members at the joints will be 
getting from E tabs. Here we are shown V2, M33 and axial force. For shear connection, the important forces are axial force and the shear force. As we already know that the shear connection will not be transferring any major moments. So for conservative side, we will be ignoring the transfer of force in form of flexure to the supporting member. We will only be considering the shear transfer as code recommends. Since the connection video is for shear, let's start with the axial forces at the connection. We will pick up the typical design. Since we are doing the typical design, so we will pick up the maximum axial forces in any of the Perlin and input in the RAM connection software. Let's turn off the girders as we, are, as we are not interested in the girder forces for this video. We are only interested in designing the connection from Perlin to the girder. Hide the girders. So apparently the highest force is 0.017 kips of positive value that is tension value. So we will provide this input in the dead load axial force as 0.017 kips. Now we proceed with the live load axial force, the highest force apparently since there is not much difference in the forces. So we are designing the typical connection. In real life projects we also do this same approach. And if there is a lot of difference to, so that considering economy we design them separately. Now it is important to note that there are different forces and signs. But the higher magnitude must be considered and the sign will be decided if the axial force is positive then conservatively you can take the positive lateral load forces so that the combination generates a critical force. And if the axial loads are also negative then you can take the lateral force induced axial loads as same signs as shown in ETABS in order to generate the critical most combina combined forces. So we are having 0 0.02. You might see that there was a negative 0 0.02 as well but I took positive 0 0.02 as the dead load and live load were positive. So adding them up will give me the most critical combination. Now let's check for shear starting with the dead load. That is 2.543 maximum shear force due to dead load in kips. I will provide this shear force input due to dead load in the RAM connection. Now due to live load. You can use any analysis software. Since we have completed the ETAPS course in this channel, which you can see the link to the complete course in the description. So that's why I'm using ETAPS for reference. Now there is no shear force due to EX and EY as it is clear that the Perlins are not part of moment resisting system. So they are only used in resisting the gravitational loads. While we can further verify there is no moment at the joints as the joints were end release from the moments as the Perlins are only to carry the gravitational loads. So they are not part of the lateral force resisting system. So the flexion is zero in shear connections. Now in order to design we need to assign the connection type that is basic SP. SP refers to shear plate. The configuration can also be edited here and the design code you can select different considering the latest code AISC LRFD will proceed. You can see the stress ratio is 0.28 that means the connection is ok and it is in green color. If it would have been in yellow color then we must go to the results and check what is wrong with the code check. We will also check in the later part of the course what this color means. Ok let's start with the analysis information. The code combination forces are shown. D1, D2 and D3 and so on are the design combination. 
the design criteria is showing the code and different moment connection exists so currently we are not having moment connection so we can ignore it or uh, we can change the beam properties from here as well beam setback is the dif distance from the beam to the web of the girder since we are having a top aligned beam okay coping is the distance that we can see here as we rotate it this is the coping distance so it, it can be left as it is now let's go to the girder section the girder can also be edited from here the plate properties are shown here the different options can also be explored we can see the standard plate let's try to change the thickness of the plate and see what impacts on the results so you see the it co converted into yellow color the stress ratio converted into yellow color so we were okay with 0.25 thickness uh, since the stress ratio is 2 less than 1 so we can further reduce the bolt sizes to economize it as there are a lot of connections okay the rows of the bolts there are two rows we can further edit them longitudinal pitch distance we can edit and check what does this mean but for learning purposes you can see what effects are they causing on the connection stress ratio one important thing you need to see that the weld minimum weld size should always be quarter inches since it is in the division of 16 so we need to set it to 4 that will mean the quarter inches the stress ratio is 0.49 so we are okay with it we can further check the results if the connection is being passed in each of the code compliant checks these are the forces ru is shear force pu is axial force the green tick mark shows that we are okay with the code checks and the global strength ratio is 0.49 so we have a factor of safety of 51% in this connection we can also export the report in word format or print it in pdf format the software also gives us detailing in form of drawing which can always be exported to AutoCAD using the export to DXF option. Check the important links in the description for much more videos. Thank you for watching.